Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at something called a pseudo quadratic. And this, for example, is an equation looking like this. So it doesn't look like a quadratic equation. But using a certain transformation, we can turn it into a quadratic equation. And then we can just use our usual methods to solve it. So the word pseudo is kind of hinting at the fact that it is hidden or it's in disguise. So we can we need to try and uncover the quadratic equation from inside. So as an example, I've got two times the square root of x plus x equals three. So this isn't a quadratic equation. There's no x squared term. Uh, there's a square root term. But if we use a substitution, so we're going to let, let's let t equal the square root of x. Now using this substitution, we can transform this equation into a quadratic equation. So we have t equals the square root of x. We can just substitute that in there. And then we have an x. So if we square both sides here, we get t squared equals to x. And that's how we get the squared term. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. So we get square root of x is t. So this is 2t plus x is t squared. So we have 2t plus t squared equals to 3. And now this is a quadratic equation, and we can solve it. So let's rearrange to get everything on one side. We get t squared plus 2t minus 3 equals 0. And this is a nice quadratic equation because we can actually factorize it directly. So we can write this as a product of two linear factors. We need two numbers that multiply together to get minus 3 and add together to get plus 2. So one way we can do this is, well, the only way we can do this is having plus 3 and minus 1. And you can see that 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 and 3t minus t does give us the 2t. So this is the factored form of this quadratic equation. And then the solutions are just, we find them by just setting the bracket equal to zero. So we just take the number and we swap the sign. So t equals minus three and t equals one are the two numbers in here that make this uh, left-hand side equal to zero. So these are the solutions. And now we have the solutions to this quadratic equation. However, we want to find out what the solutions are in terms of x. So now we need to go back to the substitution and we need to plug in what this means in terms of x. So we have minus three equals the square root of x and one equals the square root of x. But now this is where we need to be careful because minus three equals the square root of x. This doesn't make any sense. We have taken the square root of a number and we're saying this is equal to a negative number. And this is just simply impossible. So this actually leads to no solution. So we just have to get rid of it. However, this, this gives us a nice solution. Just go down here and we can square both sides and we get x equals to one. So this is the solution and it's the only solution to this uh, equation. So although it's not um, a quadratic um, equation uh, by looking at it, we can transform it and solve it using quadratic methods, and then we get a nice solution. Okay, so I want to show you one more example, and this is going to be x to the power of four minus 13 x squared plus 36, and this equals zero. Now this is a quartic equation. We have x's involving to the power of four, but can you see why this could be a quadratic? So we want to transform this, and we're gonna use the transformation let z equal to x squared. Now this is the substitution we're gonna make. Now what does this mean? If we have z equals x squared, then what does x to the power of four give us? So we can square both sides and we get z squared equals to x to the power of four. And this is where the quadratic term comes in. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute this in. This is going to give us x squared minus 13, oh sorry, z squared minus 13z plus 36, and this equals zero. And now this is a quadratic equation, so we can solve it. And this is a nice equation in the sense that we can factorize it directly. We can write this as a product of two linear factors. We need a z here and a z here, because when they multiply out, this will give us z squared. Uh, this is equal to zero. And then we need to find two numbers that multiply together to give us 36 and they add to give us minus 13. So we need to look at 36. Now, how can we write 36 as the product of two numbers? We can do one times 36, 
2 times 18. We can also do 3 times 12 or 4 times 9. And the last way we can do 6 times 6. And then obviously we can change the order, but it doesn't matter here because this is symmetric. So we need to figure out which combination of pairs that will satisfy uh, this equation up here. And if you check through the possibilities, the numbers that we want are minus 4 and minus, uh, minus 9. And you can check that minus 4 times minus 9 gives us 36, and minus 4z minus 9z is minus 13z. So this is the factorized form of this equation. And then to solve it, we just set the brackets equal to 0. And then this will give us the solutions z equals to 4 and z equals to 9. So these are the numbers that make each bracket equal to 0. So this, this is the solution of this quadratic equation. Now, just like before, we actually want to find out what the solution is in terms of x. So we have to go back to our transformation and see what this means. So we have z equals 4, so this is the same as x squared equals 4. And we have z equals 9, which is the same as x squared is equal to 9. And now to figure out what x is, we just take the square root. Luckily, these are both square numbers. Um, so this is going to give us the nice answers of x equals to 2 and x equals to 3. However, we've forgotten two solutions because minus 2, when you square it, also gives us 4. So we need to write here plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 3. So these give us the four solutions to this equation. So we originally had a quartic equation and we get four solutions. But the way we found them was just by solving a regular quadratic equation.